Corinthians chapter 5, verse 14. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 14. Hopefully I won't do like I did in Sunday school and give the wrong passage. Amen. 2 Corinthians 5, 14. Today we're going to be talking about really the greatest and maybe the only subject in a certain way in the entire universe. And that is the love of God. Now I understand about the holiness of God. The holiness of God without the love of God would lead only to judgment for those beings that could not or did not serve God perfectly. But the love of God, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And so on this Memorial Day, we are going to be talking about the love of God. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse number 14. Now, you no longer, you cannot know true love, true love, without the power of the Holy Ghost. That's right. Because the Holy Ghost is that love of God shed abroad in our hearts. The world tries to say fornication is love. It is not. It is not. It is a false definition. But love is something that when you receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost, you are just filled to overflowing. We used to sing an old song, makes you love everybody. Amen. And it's good enough for me. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians 5.14, the love of God. Aren't you thankful for the love of God? Amen. Amen. It says, for the love of Christ constraineth us. Because we thus judge... That if one died for all, then we're all dead. There's a lot of theology wrapped up in that passage. The love of God is what motivates us. Amen. And we have an understanding. That's what the term judge means in that context. Understanding that if one died for all... There was no death for only those that God in His foreknowledge knew would be saved. Amen. Jesus died for everyone, even the multitudes that would reject Him. Yeah. If one died for all. And then the next part shows us you're not good enough, I'm not good enough, nobody's good enough, Florence Nightingale, Mother Teresa, anyone else of virtue that you may think of is good enough without Jesus Christ. Amen. That if one died for all, then we're all dead. Without Jesus Christ, we are dead men walking. That's right. We are literally zombies. Yeah. That we're alive physically, but dead spiritually. Then we're all dead. Yeah. The love of Christ. Let's all pray. Ask the Lord to Give us everything he desires out of his word today on this amazing subject. God, I glorify you. I thank you for the word. I thank you for your truth. I thank you for your love. I thank you for everyone that is here today, God, under the sound of my voice. God, I ask you to touch all of us, God, in a special way. Do miracles. We need you, Lord Jesus Christ. You're amazing. God, you're able to do every miracle. You're able to do things we could not even dream of doing. God, you're able to heal every sick body, God. Jesus, you're able to deliver every bound soul. God, you're able to fill every vessel, Lord Jesus Christ. God, you're able to deliver everyone that is addicted. God, you're able to perfect that which is lacking. And God, we'll give you all the glory and the honor and the adoration, God, because we know it is your will to do us only good and not evil all the days of our life. We thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, for your love. We glorify you. We love you. In Jesus' name we ask it. And why don't we all say amen? And why don't we just amen. thank the Lord for his great love for us today? Why don't we just thank him? We can praise the Lord a lot. Why don't we just praise him again? Just a little bit. Hallelujah. We're going to be doing this about all the time. And we glorify God. He's not in just our mouth. He's seeking such to worship him.
see you live, why don't you turn to a neighbor and say, God loves you. Uh, you can be seated in the name of the Lord. Why don't you turn to either the same neighbor or a different neighbor and say, God loves me. God loves me. That's exactly right. And I'll tell you, without the love of God, all of us would be in serious trouble. John chapter 15, verse 13, that great high priestly message that he preached on the night before his crucifixion. Jesus said this, Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Now, those that have been in the military, you have examined and lived that particular scripture that you have been willing to lay down your life for a cause greater than yourself and your friends. That's the reason the military, by and large, is just such a friend to the people of the United States of America and God willing, a friend to the people of the entire world. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. I have seen mothers that were willing to lay down their life for children. One day, there was a tragic, tragic thing that happened after Georgia camp meeting. Many of you probably remember this. The Georgia camp is up in Barnesville, Georgia, off I-75, exit 201. Just take a left off, off that if you're coming from the south. Go two miles, you'll see a, a huge Georgia district, United Pentecostal Church campground. And we had had a meeting. Wow, what a meeting we had had. And it was nights of Holy Ghost revival, days of Pentecostal teaching and Pentecostal blessing. And it was just tremendous. And there was a mother of, did she have five children, Sister Waldron, do you remember? Of five children drove in a van. And she was one of the greatest examples of Christianity you could ever meet. A beautiful, beautiful Pentecostal lady with five children. And on the way home from this night of intense revival and the blessings of God and healings going forth everywhere and just miracles of God, she's driving her, her van back to the Conyers, Georgia area. She went to a Sister Walter and I's Presbyter Church a wonderful man of God, a doctor of psychology, but more than anything, a man of God. And uh, had an amazing church in Conyers and has grandson pastors the church. And all the way back home at night, after this incredible week of services, she ran over a piece, a heavy piece of metal that was, her husband was driving, a heavy piece of metal that was in the, on I-75 in the road. And it was described to me like a trailer hitch, but it wasn't a trailer hitch, but it was something like that. And it hit, it was a very heavy piece of, of metal, and it hit the gas tank of the van that they were driving, and uh, it exploded. And so they, they hit the, to the emergency lane, and his car was, his van was engulfed in flames. And this just illustrates this passage of scripture and the car was in flames and she had her children. I'm not sure how many children. Did all the children pass away? I don't remember. Is it just there? But there was one strapped in the car seat and, and the mom had been drug out and the mom was sitting there watching the one child in the middle of the conflagration in the middle of the flames. And everybody is trying to hold mom back. Yeah. Yeah. And mom is fighting with superhuman force. And finally, mom breaks free of everybody. This police are there. Firemen are there. And mom breaks free and dives into the van. It's, it's charred. It's just burnt. It's a shell by now. It's still on fire. Dives into the van and tries desperately to get her child out and the child is dead and, and the mom is dragged kicking and screaming out of that van and she has such grievous burns about six weeks later she passed away that is a mother's love and so we see this illustrated greater love hath no man than this that a man lay down his life for his friend that was a child of a mother. And I realize that's, that's an intensity. But, you know, here in the United States of America, we live such a blessed life. Even to this day, we don't realize 
the intensity of life that goes on around us, the wars, the IEDs, the, the drones, the bombs. Uh, if you were in Syria, millions of people displaced. And, you know, even in Egypt this week, you had 26 Christians on a bus, and ISIS bombs the bus and kills the 26 Christians on the bus. Maybe there were some survivors, but 26 Christians that were on the bus, I saw a picture of the bus, were killed. So the, the world lives in this, in this realm. We need to pray for the Christians of the Middle East, of which there are still millions, the birthplace, the cradle of Christianity. And there is a, a genocide, according to Franklin Graham, going on in the Middle East right now of Christians. It is open season on Christians in the Middle East. And so you're, you're my friends. If you do whatsoever I command you, and greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. So there have been times when people laid down their lives for someone else. I was so moved. I was listening to someone tell me about a friend of theirs. And they were in the military. And it just it still breaks me up to this day. And they said that as they were in uh, operation, I think it was Iraqi freedom. I don't think it was the first Gulf War. I think it was the second Gulf War. Could have been the first. I don't remember. This has been several years ago when they were recounting this story to me. And they were telling me uh, about the sacrifice a man had for his company. That somebody, a terrorist, threw a grenade that was around United States military members. They were kind of in a semicircle. And somebody threw a grenade in there. And everybody turned to run except one. And he turned towards the grenade and dove on the grenade and covered himself as it blew up because he wanted to save his friends. He wanted to save his friends. We have a God that Scripture describes as God is love. And he saw you and I partake of fruit in the garden that we shouldn't have. And the death sentence came upon every one of us. He saw an eternity in hell awaiting every single person. He saw an eternity of just being in hell, being tormented. And God, out of his great love, said my holiness demands justice but my love says mercy and they're in my image after my likeness and of course we know he had this plan from before the foundation of the world we understand all of this because god in his mind can do it. he's eternal and he does this and so he saw what was going to happen and so he saw us burning in hell or us as sons and daughters and rejoicing around the throne. And he knew there was only one way, according to Ephesians 1, in all wisdom and prudence, he chose that one way to redeem mankind. And he came down as humanity. And he took rejection, a beating. He came unto his own, his own knew him not. And he took the sins of the entire world upon his back. He was able to say seven last words on the cross. Among those phrases, those seven last phrases on the cross, was, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Looking out for mom, son, behold your mother, mother, behold your son. He was, love was thinking about someone else. The love of God. The love of God. God loved you and I so much that He was willing, as the Scripture says, to give His only begotten Son. That is not a second person of the Godhead. That is Jesus Christ coming in human form. That was God, the Holy Spirit, overshadowing Mary. And hence, He is the Father. And therefore, that holy thing that should be born of you, Luke 135, shall be called the Son of God. Yeah. Son refers to humanity, yes. to sonship, 
to flesh, so to speak. And so God loved us enough to where one soldier dies for several. One mom dies for a child. And you've got God who comes as a human and dies for the world. Thank you. I'm talking about the love of God. When we receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost, that love now resides on the inside of us. John 14, 15 says this. Jesus said in the same message that he said 15, 13, greater love hath no man than this, that man shall lay down his life for his friends. In the same message earlier, he had said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Love is not sloppy agape. Love is something that is intense and it is real. Love will make us overlook. Love covers a multitude of sins. It will make us overlook what some have done to us just to express love to them. Yeah. We, we did not have the sacrifice of Jesus because we deserved it. Jesus didn't come because we were so good. Jesus came because He was so good. Oh, yeah. Amen. Amen. You do not show love because they deserve it. You show love because you didn't deserve it. Come on. Sometimes we forget even the, the golden rule of Matthew 7, 12. It says, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. That means you treat others the way you would like to be treated Though they don't deserve it. Come on. We practice preemptive love just like Jesus practiced preemptive love. Yes. Amen. He would go up to a woman that was a sinner in Luke chapter 7 and says, Your sins, being many, are forgiven you. Yes. A woman taken in the act of adultery in John chapter 8 he says, does anybody condemn you? No man, Lord. He said, neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. So we love others not because they love us. Our treatment of others has got nothing to do with how they treat us. It's how He treated us. Amen. That's the reason we turn the other cheek because we don't respond to the world because we're not in the kingdom of the world. We're in the kingdom of God. And so when they curse, we bless. When they despitefully use, we pray. Yeah, reach it down. Reach that truth. This is the love of God. Living for God in love is just as supernatural as seeing God raise the dead, which I've seen. It's just as supernatural as God opening the eyes of the blind, which I've seen. It's just as supernatural as God casting out a host of demons from a reporter in, in uh, Kenya, which I have seen. Come on. Walking in love is just that much supernatural. As a matter of fact, Paul said if you had to choose, you can have faith to move mountains. And if you don't have love, you ain't got nothing. Oh, my. Amen. So sometimes we are so desperate for the gifts of the Spirit. And I believe in the gifts of the Spirit. And I'm used in the gifts of the Spirit. And you are used in the gifts of the Spirit. And I understand all that. But the gifts of the Spirit without the love of God are meaningless. They are just shows of power that leads to pride and spiritual carnality and don't lead to the love of God flowing and being manifested in the world. They tend to exalt flesh and exalt name instead of exalting that only name under heaven. Give them unto men whereby we must be saved. First John chapter 4 verses 7 and 8. Speak so much on the identity and character of Jesus Christ. It says, Beloved, let us love one another. For love is of God. So you cannot truly love unless you have God. Amen. And everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. Truly loves. Not imitates. Truly loves. 
He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. When you get to the fruit of the Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit starts with love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance. Against such there is no law. Very first thing it starts with is love. This world needs love. Yeah. This world, and I'm not talking about love in the way the world means love. They talk about making love. They talk about all kinds of things. They don't even know what love is all about. Amen. Love is self-sacrifice. It's not self-love. It is self-sacrifice. It is giving. It's Jesus first. Others second. Yourself last. Yes. It is a giving. It is an encouraging. It is a blessing. Oh. It is helping others make it to the top of the hill. Yes. And you realize you made it there as well. Once you help them up there. Love has so many wonderful characteristics about it. But the only way this world will ever know love is if the people of the, of the name of Jesus, the people of the Holy Ghost, show the love of God in the world. If we lose our saltiness, we are good for nothing but to be thrown into the nugget. It doesn't matter how much you know. It doesn't matter how brilliant you are. You can write the definitive book in defense of Christianity. And if you don't have love, it is meaningless. God is love. Amen. I remember when I got the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Now, I was a standoffish kind of guy. Before I got saved, I was like standoffish. When I got the Holy Ghost, I, I found myself hugging everybody. And ever since, I'm 51 now, I got saved at 18. I've just been a hugger. Now, I know there's there's proper ways to hug and improper ways to hug. The Bible even says greet one another with a holy kiss. People forget to turn holy sometimes. You know, you don't need to go around kissing people on the lips and stuff like that unless they're your spouse. Right. If you do give somebody of the opposite sex a hug, it needs to be a kind of an arm hug, not a full body hug. It's not holy if it's not. Yeah, somebody needs to preach that. Hallelujah. That's just true. Because we might be saved, but that flesh can still get kind of awoke if it's not careful. Hallelujah. So, and just because you might be in the clouds, the person you're hugging or something might not be in the clouds. They might be in the flesh. Might be a weak time. So, the love of God has to be expressed. Because we have the power of the Holy Ghost. And I remember Sister Walter, the first time I ever felt that love, it was so supernatural. It is something that is amazing. It does make you love everybody. I mean, your worst enemy now becomes a friend. You just love everybody. You don't want anybody to get hurt. You don't want anybody to, to have anything bad happen to them. And uh, you just have that ability to, to love everybody. Look, it's not a hypocrite when somebody does you wrong for you to go up and shake their hand and say, God bless you, I love you. That is not a sign of weakness and that is not being a hypocrite. That is being an apostolic one God, Jesus name, Holy Ghost filled Christian and this world needs a lot more of it. You do not let the spirit of the age get a hold of you. Don't let the spirit of Republican and Democrat get on you where they hate each other and they'll oppose each other's policies even if it's good for America because they're against the other political party and they'll be at loggerheads. The founding fathers never foresaw political parties. George Washington spoke against them. They saw it. But here we are. Friend, that stuff has no business in the church of the living God. We've got the Holy Ghost. We've been baptized in Jesus' name and we love everybody. It doesn't matter if you're white, black, Hispanic, Asian. It just doesn't matter. We love them. We want them to get the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. And I'll just tell you this. Somebody might be practicing immoral lifestyles and ungodly lifestyles. I still love them. I condemn their sin, but I tell them that God John chapter 13. We love the passage of Scripture in the Great Commission where it says, Go and preach the gospel to all nations, and these signs shall follow them that believe. Sometimes 
we stumble in John 13 verses 34 and 35 because the work I think revival's not going to hit because miracles hit this church. Come on. Yeah. The gifts of the Spirit are primarily for the church, but they can be used for unbelievers as well. But this, let's just read it. John 13 verses 34 and 35. A new commandment I give unto you. That you love one another. This is to the church. As I have loved you. How did he love us? He died for us. Amen. That you love one another as I have loved you. That ye also love one another. Now he's going to tell what happens when that happens. By this shall all men know that you are my disciples. If you have love one to another. We can put United Pentecostal Church, we can put Apostolic, we can put Pentecostal, Jesus name Pentecostal, one is Pentecostal, one is Apostolic, we can put whatever we want outside. That's not going to matter. Come on, That's right. Yeah. What's going to matter, pal, how everybody's going to know that we're disciples of Jesus Christ is that we have love one to another. Amen. T-O, preposition, it implies action. You have to have love one to another. Again, not with the perverted definition of the world's definition of love, right. but of love, which is which is giving, which is self-sacrifice, yeah. which is patient, which is kind, which does all these wonderful things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, yeah. endureth all things, what? charity, it never fails, love and action, it never fails. How everybody will know that we're an apostolic church. It's not going to be debating doctrine, even though we should contend earnestly for the faith, what faith once delivered unto the saints. It's going to be because we love one another. And it's not just new life. That is every church in existence. Whenever they have love one to another, everybody says, look at how much they love everybody. Amen. I've noticed something about this area. Now, you have to remember, even though I've got strong roots over in Douglas, over 200 relatives, and went there all the time as a young man, went spent summers and different things there, uh, that type of thing, that my, my real roots in a certain sense is in the Clayton County, Henry County, Georgia area. Kind of rural, suburban areas. It used to be far more rural south of Atlanta. Something I've noticed around here that is just uh, shocking is that when you know people go out to eat, there still tends to be some you know things there. Who knows where it comes from? And I'm not trying to make statements beyond what they should be intended. But as far as fellowship and as far as love, man, I don't even look at skin color. I mean, every you got the Holy Ghost, you're baptized with you. It doesn't matter. We don't have black churches. We don't have white churches. We don't have Hispanic churches. We don't have Asian churches. We have blood ball churches. Amen. And that's the way it has to be because when you begin to have the love of Christ, I remember, you know, I'm just going to be totally real with you guys. I may make some of you careful, I doubt. I grew up, a friend of mine, I'm not going to make his name, but man, this dude, when he was 14, 15, he was in the Klan. He was in the KKK. This friend of mine, he was in the Klan. And he bragged about it. And I remember when he came to school one day and he was beaten. I'm like, dude, what happened to you? He said, well, I was over at the Pentecostal church. And they were having a revival. He said, have you ever heard of Pentecost? I said, yeah, because I grew up next door to Pentecostal preacher. You know what Pentecostal? I said, I have. He said, well, I got the Holy Ghost. I said, you did? He said, yeah, this is where I got the Holy Ghost. I said, you got the Holy Ghost. He said, I got the Holy Ghost, and it's awesome. I said, are you still in the, coo the KKK? He said, are you crazy? He said, I love everybody now. Right. He said, we got black in our church and everything else. I'm going to tell you, you and I have got to have fresh baptisms of love. We can't allow anything in this world to creep in to the church of the living God. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter if they spite at you. It doesn't matter what happened. You've got the power of the Holy Ghost. The kingdom of God is within. We are emissaries of another world. We are ambassadors for Jesus Christ. Our citizenship is in heaven. It's got nothing to do with Washington, D.C. And it's got everything to do with the new Jerusalem. Glory to God. Why don't we just give glory to Jesus Christ?
Hallelujah. So regardless of the need of skin, no, anything, the love of God needs to happen. Love incarnate, love divine, love crucified arose. The great lie of Satan, one of many in this generation, is that sexual immorality is love. That love is made, not lived. In 2 Peter 1.7, we find that the height of spiritual maturity is not the possession of every nine, nine gifts of the Spirit. The height of spiritual maturity is charity. In 1 Corinthians 13, 1 through 3, we find knowledge and spiritual power bow the knee in charity. We find in Mark 12, 31 and also Leviticus 19, 18 that to love our neighbor as we love ourselves. Combined with loving God with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength is the great commandment in the law. Yeah. In 1 John chapter 4, verse 20, we read these stinging words. If a man say, I love God and hateth his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother whom he hath seen, how can he love God whom he hath not seen? I'm going to read that again. It says, if a man say, I love God and hateth his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother whom he hath seen, how can he love God whom he hath not seen? I love people that aren't in the United Pentecostal Church. Amen. Love my brother. You know, I don't care if they're in the ALJC. I don't care if they're WPF. I don't care if they're independent. Acts 2, 38, oneness. I love them like a brother and a sister. And then I love the war people that aren't saved. Man, I love them. I want everybody to get it. Yes. Hallelujah. And they'll get it when they know that we love one another. Yeah. Why? Because the world, you've got to love God more than you love your family. You've got to love God more than you love anything. Yeah. What do you stand? We talked about this Wednesday night. What do you love more than truth? If you let anything you love more than truth, then you're going to fall. You're going to be in error. 1 John 2.15 says, love not the world. It's not talking about the people of the world. It's talking about the world system. Neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. You either love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, love your neighbor, or you love the world. There's only two pathways out there. A little leaven leavens the whole lot. I'm so appreciative of people in this church that I have learned the love of God from. I have seen the love of God in your life. I have seen you sacrifice. I have seen you inconvenience yourself time after time after time to see the work of God done, to help others, to help this church, to help even Sister Walter and I personally. I thank God for that. I thank God for those incredible examples. What we need is the power of the Holy Ghost to motivate us to love. We are living in a time of tribalism and of tribal hatred, of different economic classes hating each other and, and different groups of people not liking each other. And it's a time of division here on this Memorial Day. One nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Getting back to those ideals of the founders and those ideals that are encapsulated. Look, nothing's going to be perfect this side of the New Jerusalem. But we can't allow the imperfections to become something that rips the fabric of our culture apart and the balkanization of the country happens and that Southerners don't like Northerners and people in Georgia don't like Floridians and people in Florida don't like people in North Carolina and on and on and so forth and don't like your neighbors and don't like them. You better have a baptism of the love of God. Oh, yeah. You might say, Pastor Walden, and why don't we stay to our feet? You might say, Pastor Walden, it's getting pretty dark outside. All I know is, is the darker the night, the more the light shines. Amen. And we have got to let the Holy Ghost light shine in us. The love of God oh, yeah. strength is greater love than this. Hath no man that he'd lay down his life for his friends. I wonder if you could right now. 
Why don't you just pray for a neighbor if it's appropriate? If it's not, find somebody that it is appropriate to pray for and ask God to bless them really good. Let's just ask God to lose great blessings. Part of love is praying one for another, asking God to bless each other. Let's everyone pray together in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God, I ask you to bless my brothers and my sisters. Bless these good brothers. Hallelujah. Amazingly. God, hallelujah. Bless him amazingly. God, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Bless them. God, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Bless them incredibly. Bless them awesomely, God. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Red and yellow blood.